my name is Joe Cortez, former international boxing referee. I want to welcome you to the website fairbutfirm.com. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what happened most recently. There were two shocking upsets in boxing. One of the upsets was Chad Dawson getting TKO by Adonis Stevenson, a Canadian who was a super middleweight most of his career, decided to go up to a light heavyweight and he proved that he has the punch. The punch that nailed Chad Dawson right below the ear in the first round. Dawson goes down on his back. Looked like he wasn't going to get up. The referee, Mike Griffith, started to count. Mike uh, gave him a good eight, a count evaluation, looking in his eyes, and decided when Dawson got up, that was it. And of course, most fighters, when they get stopped, oh, I'm okay to continue. He got kind of upset about the results. The referee stopped the contest. But you have to remember, referees are there to protect the fighters. We don't want to see these fighters taking unnecessary punishment. And the referee did the right thing. And of course, as referees, we do our homework. And we tell referees, look at his track record. How did he do in his previous fights? Mike, the referee, felt, you know, Dawson got stopped in his previous fight by uh, Andrew Ward. Andrew Ward stopped uh, Chad Dawson. And so, you know, you don't want to see these fighters walking around their heels later on in their careers. So I think referee Griffith did a fine, outstanding job in stopping the contest. Let's see where Chad Dawson goes from here. I guess he has to go back to the drawing board, talk to his team, and see what's next time for him in the coming future. We don't know. But we sure don't want to see fighters, you know, get hurt seriously. And uh, Chad Dawson was a great champion, did a lot of good things for boxing, did good for himself. Hopefully, he put some amount of money away so he can have a career ahead of him in a different field. Hopefully, most fighters, and these days, they, uh, they make these big bucks and they spend it before they think they're going to be around forever. And I like my advice to fighters is invest your money, do something with your money. So when you retire, you have a window, 10 years, 10 good years in boxing. That's it. If you don't capitalize on it and take advantage of those good years when the cash is coming in, you're, you're going to miss the boat. So take advantage, do what you have to do, and get into a different business after your career is over. That's why I say get an education if you can. That's first and foremost. Get a good education so you don't have to handle your money. You fighters out there that are listening to this, I'll tell you, I've seen 99.9% .9 of the fighters end up broke. And it's a shame. We don't want to see that. But hopefully, fighters can take care of themselves in the right ways for the, for the future and for their families. Another upset, big upset, Juan Mar Lopez from Puerto Rico fought Mickey Garcia. Supposed to be a 126 pound championship, Mickey Garcia couldn't make the weight. So the title was not on the line. That was fighting for a vacant title. But in boxing, if you don't make the weight, even if you win the fight, you do not win the title. So what happened was, Juan Lopez decided to take the fight. Some fighters can walk away and say, no, I'm not going to fight him. But it's a big payday you're going to lose. And on top of that, Garcia forfeited $150,000, which is that chump change to most people out there. And uh, Juan Ma Lopez took the $150,000. And I wonder if he's thinking about, well, maybe I should have taken the $150,000 because Garcia was stronger, much bigger. And of course, when you wait the day of the fight, the next day you come in 10, 12, 15 pounds heavier anyway. So uh, not that Garcia uh, was that big of a guy, but he did a couple of pounds difference makes a big difference in boxing. I mean, I ought to know. <laughs> when you get hit with a punch from a guy while we're in training or in a fight, if the guy got two or three pounds on you, you're going to feel a different the effect of a punch. So Lopez gets dropped in the first round by a punch by a, I take it back. He gets dropped in the first round and uh, went the storm, but in the fourth round, he got hit with a shot. When he went down, the referee, Ralph Ramos, who did an excellent job in refereeing that night, Gave him the A count, evaluated the fighter, asked him a couple of questions, stepped forward, 
Lopez did not respond in the proper way. Again, the referees are there for main purposes. First and foremost, safety. Watching out for the safety of the fighter and the referee. Ralph Ramos did the right thing, waved it off. And you know what? There was no protest there. And uh, what about Lopez? Got to stop and think about where is he going from here? Because, uh, again, Lopez, previous fight, when he fought Salido last year, he got stopped. So uh, Lopez had to start thinking about where is he going with his career down the line. When you got two consecutive uh, knockouts against you, uh, it's not a good thing in boxing. You know, uh, we don't want to see these fighters walking around uh, in bad shape. And we see too much of it. Talking about seeing too much of it. I mean, I just got back from the International Boxing Hall of Fame uh, last week. And you see some of the fighters that are there, they're not at 100%. And it's a shame because uh, the, the punches, these fighters are warriors. They refuse to quit. They don't want to stop. You got to kill a fighter before you can stop him. And you know, that's why the referee has to be in there and make sure if a fighter gets dropped a couple of times, the referee should start thinking already, well, I got to start doing something to, to protect this fighter, go into the corner in between rounds and tell the fighter, hey, listen, you're taking a little too much here. You got to show me something next round. If you don't, I'm going to consider stopping this fight. And this way, the corner knows it, the commentators and the, the fans can see that there is some concern of the referee going into that corner in between rounds. You have to sell your call. So nobody will protest and say, well, he never told us anything, but I've gone into corners and talked to a fighter, and you know what? The next round, the guy came back like Superman and ended up knocking out his opponent. So it's a psychological thing that when you go to a fighter and talk to him, he says, oh my God, I gotta do something because the referee's gotta stop this fight. You get like that, that second win and the, uh, the adrenaline and it kicks in and you're like, but it doesn't happen too often. Very rare does that happen. Most times, most of the time, the fighter just cannot, you know, get back to that level. You know, your your, your body fluids, uh, you're losing so much fluid, you're, you're taking a pounding. It's just so much pressure on the fighter. When you got an opponent in front of you, throwing punches from all different angles, and you can't defend yourself properly, you're getting hit, you're getting dropped. You know, they got to be... Uh, Somebody to have mercy on this fight and say, you know, that's enough. Referees are like guardian angels, I say. We come there, we're there to protect these fighters, we protect them like they're our sons. And we don't care where you're from, what walk of life, we love you like you're, you're just son. These fighters are our sons. We're there to protect them. And you know, that's like any father would do with his son. His son is taking a, 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 a beating someplace, the father wouldn't jump in and stop it. That's, that's the attitude I have when I was refereeing. And that's what I tell, try to instill it by referees, my colleagues out there. These fighters are like your sons. Treat them like they're your sons. You have to enforce the rules, but watch out for the safety of the fighters. Boxing is not an easy sport. It's a lot of fun to watch. And uh, what can I tell you? Uh, do the best you can. And uh, we'll talk to you next week, guys. Take care. God bless.